If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. In a very real sense, we can say that narcissists operate with a very basic, almost primitive mindset toward you. They're very black and white in their way of reasoning, which is why they're so predictable. In their way of thinking, as they approach you, they're thinking, I'm up, you're down. I'm deserving, you're not, you're a loser. I'm enlightened, you're stupid. I'm right, you're wrong. That's how they think and that's what they bring to you as they engage with you on so many different levels. Over and over, they insinuate certain messages. The insinuation is, you're supposed to bend a knee toward me. Stop thinking as you do. Just stop being who you are. Quit arguing with me and just do what I say. Shut up already. And then as they do take this attitude toward you, it's done with a haughty mindset. They can be very insulting. They can have anger that sometimes is, uh, is over the top. Sometimes it's just of the contemptuous, uh, simmering kind of nature. And I wonder how many times when you've been in the presence of this, have you thought, I am so weary. I am so tired of having to be in the presence of someone who's so condescending. How did I get mixed up with someone who's so selfish? How did I get mixed up with someone who's so close-minded or mean or manipulative or uncaring? Okay. And then I'm wondering as you think about this, uh, can you also see that perhaps you've fallen into their traps? There, uh, you can probably look back and, re and recall that there are times when you've defended yourself unsuccessfully again and again. Perhaps you try to talk sense into that person. Maybe you even make excuses on that individual's behalf. Uh, you get caught in circular discussions which turn into embarrassing arguments. You may have tried to pacify them. Maybe that'll get them off your back. Maybe you can hide out. Maybe you'll appease. Uh, perhaps you alter your plans just to keep them off your back. I mean, there are all sorts of ways that you can engage with them. And it's like, you know what? I'm becoming dysfunctional now, too. And then I want you to ask, as you get in, involved in that kind of uh, reactive way to them, how well does it suit you? Uh, and how, uh, how successful is it when you try to come in against them playing their game and you, you'll continue to be the recipient of their disdain again and again and again? You know what? At some point, it's time for you to just uh, to stand up to the narcissist and more or less in, uh, imply I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to go along with this. Uh, I've tried to do all sorts of things that you want me to do, and all it does is it just keeps you triggered. I'm not playing that game. And you need to have that courage to stand up and say, this is me. Now, when I talk about courage, I'm talking about strength in the midst of adversity. Do you have the necessary courage to stand up and say, this is who I am? Now, as you do so, I'm hoping that you can see yourself going into a very strong paradigm shift. And by that, I mean, we're not going to play the game of con convincing anymore. We're not going to, uh, to try to you know, get that person to see the light. You're not going to plead your case. You're not going to play the role of persuader in chief towards that person because all you do is you're getting into their circular games. When you say, I'm going to stand up to the narcissist, what you're thinking within yourself is, I'm done. I will no longer play the role that that person has assigned to me. Things are going to be different uh, from now on. Perhaps not on their side because they're, they're just going to be what they are, but things are going to be different on my side of the equation. I'm going to be me. You may or may not like it, but uh, I'm charting a new path. Now, once narcissists pick up on this kind of mindset and attitude that you have, you're going to have the courage to say, I'm going to be me. Guess what? 
there's a close to 100% chance or guarantee that these people are not going to be impressed and they're going to be agitated instead. They can think, you know what? I hate you when you try to stand up to me like that. Uh, that, that doesn't work for me. Or they may think you, not, you have no idea how stupid or misinformed you are. They can think uh, you will not have my endorsement. You will not have my cooperation. You will regret the day that you ever stood up against me. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm going to uh, humiliate you. I'll bring you down. I mean, they can think all sorts of awful thoughts. Now, it's so important, and this is why, and by the way, when they uh, come at you that way, it illustrates, yeah, this is why I need to stand up and I need to do something different. I'm not going along with that. Uh, at some point, I'm hoping you can recognize, when you stand up to the narcissist, it is not your goal to change that person's mind. Uh, it's not your goal to negotiate. It's not your goal to, uh, to try to come up with some sort of compromises. Instead, what you're going to do when you stand up to a narcissist is you're there to, first and foremost, just to hear yourself say what you need to say, to say, you know what, I believe in me. But basically, there can be a time when you just simply need to inform, not plead, not uh, sell, uh, not persuade, just simply to inform. Here's who I am. Here's what I'm going to do. These are the differences I'm going to make. Uh, in addition, uh, you want to, uh, uh, to make sure that, uh, that you're not going to continue to suppress the same old crummy thoughts and, and, uh, uh, or uh, emotions that you have for such a long time. And you're basically going to explain that, uh, you have a new approach to who they, uh, to, to the relationship that you have with them. Uh, and it could be that there's going to be some consequences or stipulations or withdrawal from you, but it's your way of saying, I'm not doing this anymore. I, I recall, one man, he was like 50 years old, who had a bully of a father, and he finally had the courage uh, before a holiday season to uh, sit down with the father and say, who you are is not who I am, and uh, what you think is not what I think, and how you treat me is not how I'm going to go anymore. Uh, I, I'll no longer be showing up at any kind of family gatherings where you are if this is who you're going to be toward me. Uh, you can be what you want to be, but just know uh, that I'll remove myself if that's the case. That's what I'm talking about when I say uh, you're uh, you're going to stand up. <laughs> I had another case, and this is a, a, almost humorous, uh, but it was also serious. A woman who had been mistreated by her husband for a long time sat in my office. This is years ago, and uh, he had had done one thing too many that just uh, ticked her off. And so she she sat him down and said, "I have a few things to say to, uh, to you." And she was looking at me, and then she would look at him. And she would say, uh, I can't stand it when you treat me like this. And then she would look over and say, blank you. And I can't stand it when you uh, do this and this and this. And she'd look over at him and say, blank you again. And she had about seven or eight. And every day and she would punctuate it by saying certain um, you know, derogatory things to him. I don't know that we need to go quite that far, but it was her way of saying, I, I, you're, you're, you're seeing it. And we're, we're talking a little Sunday school lady uh, who uh, had a sweet and all history. I mean, sometimes you can just be, be so fed up. It's like, I'm going to stand up. And I don't care what you think. Now, we have to be careful, obviously. Obviously, you don't want to get yourself in any deeper trouble. Uh, but the, the point is, um, I, at least I'm hoping that as you stand up, you, know, you can remind yourself, I have zero need to, uh, to demean. I don't really want to ridicule. I don't feel like I need to debate. I'm not trying to, uh, to, uh, to be insistent. I'm not going to uh, go in that space. I'm just going to give you some plain, straight talk. This is who I am, and this is where I, uh, this is where I stand. Now, how do you find that courage to be able to stand up and say what needs to be said? First and foremost, I'm hoping you can remind yourself what is behind the narcissist mask when they come at you in this insufferable kind of way that puts you in this position in the first place. These people are profoundly insecure. These people are carrying a great deal of psychological pain, and unfortunate, that's unfortunate for them, but it's, uh, it's not appropriate for them to unload their insecurity and unload their pain on, onto you. Knowledge is power. When you realize this is what I'm dealing with, then uh, it can help you find the objectivity because they want to make it all about you. Uh, also, I'm hoping you can remind yourself how miserable your history with that person has been when you go into the acquiescent mode. I don't want to keep doing that anymore. And then uh, to find the courage to, uh, to stand up to the narcissist, I'm hoping you can remind yourself, I'm doing this for me. 
Someone uh, needs to be a uh, an advocate on my behalf, and that someone is myself. I deserve an advocate, and I'm going to be first in line to go into that space. I'm hoping you can hold on to certain thoughts as you engage with that person. I'm doing myself too much harm uh, when I remain falsely silent or when I uh, hold on to too much agitation. I'm also hoping you can think I'm not stand uh, not not standing up puts me in a position of the enabler and I'm not playing that role anymore. I have dignity. I in fact my dignity is inherent to who I am. It's part of my humanity whether they believe it or not. I make sense. I have opinions, I have plans, I have priorities, and I'm going to go ahead and move forward with that. And then when the narcissist invalidates me, I'm going to remind myself, yes, that's what they do, but those truths are still true. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't need that person's acceptance. In fact, if I do gain that person's acceptance, it's almost as though I feel like I've sold my soul to the devil so that I can get it. I'm not playing that game anymore. When that person is angry and when that person is judgmental, uh, that's not my problem to solve. I'm not going to defend. I'm simply going to be me and I'm going to let my, uh, my priorities and my lifestyle choices, my initiatives become my behavioral uh, assertiveness. Every day, every hour, every minute uh, that I live under the narcissist dominance is time that I've lost a, a precious part of who I am. Uh, no human being has the right to belittle me. And furthermore, it's irresponsible for me to play along with that kind of game. Is that fairly clear? I hope so. I hope you have the courage to stand for who you are. And obviously, you need to pick your words carefully and pick your timing carefully. And uh, and if necessary, you just completely remove yourself as, or at least eliminate as much time as possible and influence as possible as that person has in your life. Be who you are. It's irresponsible for you to be anything other than that. Now, I hope the video such as this can give you some good food for thought. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do. We have a, a video tab inside my channel, and it'll uh, give you access to all the other videos that I've had. I'm so glad you allow me to be on your journey with you. Now, most of you know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online therapy resource. When you're dealing with something like this, it can sure be good to have a coach by your side, so to speak, uh, who can help you sift out the whys and wherefores of this. Uh, the link is below. that will take you to their website. Uh, as the need is there, uh, please do so. You can go through there and choose a, a therapist to work with you. It can be so helpful for someone to say, I believe in you. Let's work together. Let's see if we can understand who you are and, and how you need to get your, to your best version of yourself. In addition, in my retirement, I put together online classes, courses. Each class has, and, and you can uh, uh, do it at your own pace. You can share it with whoever you want. Uh, each class has at least 25 teaching videos. Each video has uh, documents, um, guided um, uh, um, uh, handouts that go along with it, with, along with questions. We have anger games about how not to get sucked into their anger. This is me about establishing those boundaries that are so necessary. Free to be, ready, set, connect. There are links below that will explain each of those to you. On my website, I have access to my webinars, which are 90-minute presentations of a different nature, along with access to my podcasts, many articles, my books, etc. Lots of resources. At some time, at some point in your life, it's time to say enough is enough. I'm standing up for who I am. I vote for me. And when the narcissist says, well, I'm not on board with you, then the, your response, in, at least in your mind can be, uh, yes, I know that, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, hold firmly to who you are. And in doing so, I hope that you can find a measure of steadiness and a measure of strength, uh, that is beyond what you have had in the past. And in doing so, it takes you down the path towards what I hope is going to be plenty of peace for you. I so want you to have your peace.